hello, my friends. So we are gonna talk today about a couple things that you can do for things that are like therapy. So, so a couple years ago when I taught Club 21, I was trained in what's called Mind Up. And Mind Up is a curriculum that it literally teaches you how to um, control all of your emotions. And since this has been such a crazy year already, uh, I think that there's probably gonna be a lot of emotions. So it's gonna be really good for you to learn some simple techniques that you can use to calm yourself. So we may have been making dough and that's a good way to calm yourself because it uses all of your senses. Um, this is another way, this is meditation. So I'm gonna take you through some simple kid meditation. I'm gonna give you another video of um, some kids meditating. And then we're also gonna talk about sand therapy. And um, we're gonna make some moon sand, which is cool and it feels really good and it smells really good too. Uses all of your senses as well. Um, and why, that's, why that motion and why that's good for you and why that's important. Um, and, and a couple other things, like I have some rice for you, you to show you how you could do some, play some games, but use the rice for that. And those are all things that help you learn to be calm and to get out some of your emotions and some of your anxieties. So meditation for kids. Why do we do meditation? You do meditation, you need to find a quiet spot so for right now, this is my quiet spot, uh, you need mindfulness. That means that you need to take in all of the things through your senses. So we've been talking a lot about your senses when we talked about your, you know, how to, when we're making dough and we're using our sense of touch and we're using our sense of smell and we're using our sense of sight and um, all of those things that we're taking in. This one, um, meditation, it, you have to be mindful of what's going on around you. You need to do things intentionally. So you're intentionally breathing in all of your good things. You're intentionally pushing out as much of the anxiety as you can. If you're concentrating on your breathing, which is next. So if you're concentrating on your breathing, then that's where your mind is focused and all of the bad thoughts and all of the other things that are stressing you out go away. So that's what we're gonna do. We breathe normally just all the time. We breathe all the time and we forget about it, but when you do it with intention, you do it on purpose, um, you actually learn to release stress. Soft thoughts, so that's what I call them. That's not, that's not a technical term, that's my term. Um, soft thoughts to me means that you're not going to be thinking about that really great rock, hard rock song you like. You're going to be thinking about things that are calming, like running water or even just straight happy thoughts. I had um, one child who always said that every time he closed his eyes and he was in a good mood, he saw ice cream. Hey, I'm all about it. If that's your soft thought that you have ice cream and that it's coming to you and it's a it's a nice mellow dream and nobody's fighting over the ice cream that is a really good thought to have so you want to have intentional happiness we want to purposely be thinking about our blessings and what is good in our life now can we always think about that no there are times when we're in the middle of really crazy rough things and we totally understand that this is a way for you to try to remember the things that make you happy. Is it easy? No, it's not always easy to intentionally just try to block out what is really horrible and think about what is really good, but it is an, it's a skill. And so we're gonna try a little meditation breathing. So I want you to sit with your legs crossed, put your hands up, to bring in happiness. If you would like, you can touch your thumb to your point, your middle finger. That actually just, it's just a yoga meditation stance. Um, and you wanna cross your legs, crisscross applesauce is what we call it in preschool, but you know, it's just folded legs. Um, you're gonna close your eyes. You're gonna find that nice quiet spot. You're gonna close your eyes. 
Some people like to be use music when they meditate. That is also okay. You can use um, sounds, like nature sounds, the Calm app, C-A-L-M, is, is a nice app to use. Sometimes they have a lot of good things on there. And they will warn you as well. That's a, The one thing is I stopped wearing my Apple Watch because it was telling me to breathe all the time. And I was like, am I that hyped up that my Apple Watch thinks that it's time that I have to breathe? But that, that will happen. Your Fitbits and your Apple Watches will tell you to breathe. I want you to put your hand though, right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit up a little bit so you can see, but I want you to put your hand on your stomach. So when you are doing meditation breathing or yoga breathing, you are going to breathe in through your nose and you're gonna fill your stomach so it's actually pushing against your hand. You're doing that so that you're actually oxygenating your, your body. So you're gonna breathe in and hold it for just a second and then breathe out and release whatever it is. So you're gonna breathe in. Fill your belly, make sure your belly's full. Breathe out and release all of the stress from your body. This time when I want you to breathe in, I want you to breathe in and then I want you to make sure your eyes are closed and think about something really, really happy. For me, it's always like water at the beach, but for you, it could be something over your head. You're gonna breathe in. Intentionally think about happiness. Think about something good. And breathe out. Good job, breathe in. And out. And you're gonna keep doing that until you feel better. We're not gonna hit things. We're not gonna, we're not going to throw things. Not at first, anyway. We're going to try the breathing first. Now, I've done this with kids as young as four, as my three and four year olds. We did teach them how to meditation breathe and they're very good at it. They're very good at it. So I'm sure that you, since you're older kids, would be excellent at it. When I taught this before, we actually intentionally had to list three things that made us happy every time it was our turn. So we all would breathe. And then when we got to our turn, we had to list three things that make us happy. My Mine are always the same. The beach, dogs, my dogs make me happy and, and my family. Not always in that order, but they are the things that make me happiest. Um, but you can, you can, you know, obviously different things make different people happy. You have to um, intentionally think about the good things in your life. So even if you don't feel like everything is going your way, you still want to teach, you still want to think about what is good in your life. And right now, it's these videos. I mean, how great are these videos? Who wouldn't like to do a little meditation breathing for some relaxation? Of course you would. Um, I just want to say that this temple shirt is also making me happy because my niece, Rebecca, she is the last one of our, my sister and I have five children together, not together, together, but five children, and she is the last, and she has decided to go to temple to dance there, and we are so proud of her, and I am so proud that all of my children and all of my, and my niece, and my, now my next niece, are all decided to go to college even though not everyone has to go to college to that's just what they chose to do and we're happy because those are their goals and their dreams so I want you to come up with your goals and your dreams I want you to come up with what makes you happy um, I want you to remember why meditating and breathing is important um, remember now you have some dough that you can use if you need to be a little calmer, you now know how to meditation breathe. And in a little bit, I'm gonna show you a couple yoga moves that you can use that also are just calming. I'm only showing you the calming ones. I'm not going through all of the vinyasa and all of the whole, the total yoga class, although I may put one up on the video. Um, but then I'm gonna, I'm also putting up a video of sand therapy and um, there's an expert, a psychologist talking to you about sand 
therapy and why that feels really good. We are going to, in a little bit, make moon sand so that we can use it for our sand therapy. I'm also gonna talk to you in a little bit about some other things that you can use that are tactile, nice for, ther for some therapy. And I want you to just feel good and be happy because we think you are wonderful, wonderful people. So I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome to this short mindfulness meditation for kids. Find a place where you can sit and relax for five minutes. You can close your eyes now. Wow, it's quite dark here behind your eyelids. Now keep your eyes closed and imagine that you have a magic mindfulness wand floating in front of you. You can control this magic wand with your mind. Imagine that wherever you shine the light of the wand, that's where your attention goes to. Your mind may wish to think about other things, but see if you can direct it back to wherever your magic mindfulness wand is shining. Now direct the wand so it shines on your breathing. As you focus on your breathing, notice your breath as it comes in and out so easily. Just feel your body breathing in and out. Just allow any thoughts you may have to pass through your mind. Then bring your attention back to where your wand is pointing, back to your breathing. Now shine the wand down to your feet. Feel your feet as they are resting on the ground. Can you feel the energy in your feet? Notice what your toes feel like. If your mind starts to wander, just focus your attention to where the magic wand is shining on your feet. Shine the wand now on the whole middle part of your body, your chest, back and belly. Can you feel the energy in the middle part of your body? How does your belly feel? Just notice what this area feels like. You don't have to change anything, just let it be as it is right now. When you are ready, shine the magic wand over your whole body. How does it feel? Notice the light from the wand shining brightly over your whole body. Feel your energy in the light of the wand. Shine the magic wand inside to your feelings. Take a good look around and see inside to what is there. As you shine your wand on your feelings, what do you see? All of your feelings are welcome here. Just notice them as your wand is shining the light inside you.
When you're ready, you can point your magic wand into the room where you are. Gently open your eyes. Your magic mindfulness wand can stay in your imagination for you to use any time you wish. Well done for a wonderful meditation. Hi, I'm Tanya Peterson with the Anxiety Shme Anxiety blog on HealthyPlace.com. Today, I would like to share with you a technique that can help work on the physical symptoms of anxiety, as well as help calm those racing thoughts. It actually comes to us from play therapy. It's playing with sand. Now play therapy isn't just for kids. It's for adults and children alike. And if you're in therapy using sand, the actual formal therapy is going to be more involved than what I'm going to share with you today. This is just borrowing the same concept so you can work on your own. It won't go as deeply as it would in therapy, but what it does is it helps the physical symptoms and helps calm your mind. So when you're playing with sand, it doesn't have to be fancy. You can use a shoebox full of sand. You can get sand in a hardware store. You can also use a bucket, any kind of pail. This isn't an expensive technique, but the goal is to physically just work with the sand. This box has dry sand, and that has the advantage of just letting you pick it up, let you run it through your fingers, maybe bury your hand in it, and just feel the effects. Focusing on that and doing some movement and actually manipulating something while you're breathing, but you're doing something in addition to breathing, helps calm that physical tension. Have you ever, with anxiety, just felt so tense like you're going to explode and you can't really do anything about it? That's where sand play comes in. You can just run your hand through dry sand or you can use a bucket of wet sand. With wet sand, you can actually form something into like a little castle and smash it. You have that advantage of really getting out some of that tension. And at the same time, you're calming your mind because you, you can just feel it, focus on the smashing or focus on running your hand through the sand. And when you're focused on that, naturally your thoughts begin to calm down. You can actually use little critters if you want to, sometimes burying them and uh, finding them. They can sometimes represent something that you're dealing with and you're, you're dealing with somebody, you know, a stressful boss at work and there he goes. That doesn't solve your problem, but it helps give out, get rid of some of that tension. An alternative to sand that does very, very similar things is rice. If you don't want to go to the hardware store and buy sand, but you have rice around your house, put some rice in a box. The difference is rice you can't form into a lump and then smash it down, but it does everything else. So sand play, again, is something that really helps reduce that physical tension and those racing thoughts. It's calming, it gives your muscles something to do, and it works on anxiety in the moment. It's not a long-term fix, but it's a short-term relief of symptoms. So give it a try. It's not just for kids. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Me again. So before I give you, so I, I know you just watched the video on sand therapy um, from an expert, not from me. Um, but we're gonna, she did talk to you a little bit about rice. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about rice. So the one thing that I want you to remember that when you are doing any of these things, right now this is for therapy, but you know, I'm a, well, it's not for therapy. It's for, the, it's for our mental health. It's for our total body health. 
Um, but what I want you to remember about this also is you can also play educational games and do the exact same thing. So these are, these are actually just letters, like from a letter board. Like I have one of these letter boards. I don't know if I have one of these. Um, and this is just a, these are just the letters from the letter board. One game that I used to play with my fifth graders all the time is if you just put these in there and mix them up so like you can't really see them, but it doesn't matter if you can see them or not. What I want you to do is remember the, the motion, putting your fingers through uh, the, kinesthetic, the kinesthetic motion is what is really healthy for you. It relaxes your heart rate. It relaxes your breathing. Um, it, it takes your focus onto something else. So I want you to go ahead and, and you know, rub through the sand, the sand or the rice, the, in this case, rice. And then I want you to play a game. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes and in here are these little letters. So without opening your eyes, I want you to see if you can figure out what letter it is by um, just feeling around. So. This one is, I believe it is H, I am correct. So I'm just gonna put it on my board, but if you didn't have one of these fancy dancy boards, you can obviously use anything. Maybe my fancy dancy board's not working anyway. Okay, there. Um, but then you could just do it. And, and the longer it takes, the, the more fun it actually is. Oh, let me see, it looks a little harder. Did I get another H, is that possible? Yes, what? There's only two H's in there and I bought, I got both of them at the same time. Don't ask me how that happened. Um, but then when you have like a good assembly of letters up here, I would see if you can spell different words with them. It's like playing boggle, right? Like, so you get like a whole bunch of letters up here and you see if you can um, spell some words at the end. In the meantime, the rice feels good, it's fun. It's a nice quiet game. It's just a very good rainy day activity. If you don't feel like, you know, doing anything else, I would play the rice letter game. If you do not have these kind of letters, my, first of all, the magnet letters that, that you can get at the dollar store work, you know, the ones that everybody has that you can put on your refrigerator, those work. If you do not have those, then you can actually make these. All you have to do is make the letters out of construction paper and put them on the very bottom and then feel around and then same thing, feel by the shape of the letter. Um, so it's a fun game. Go ahead and play with some rice and I'll be back in a little bit to show you how to make moon sand. And moon sand is one kind of sand that we can use for inside therapy, just like they were talking about on the video. Obviously, if you have a sandbox or you're at the beach, try it. If you're feeling a little stressed, lay in the sand, close your eyes, and just run your hands. And that's why people always like run their feet too. Your feet are really good in the sand. That's, it's very good therapy. It's very soothing. Okay, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in a little bit to show you how to make moon sand. Bye. friends. So I put up in the, the um, slideshow the recipe for moon sand. So that's what we're going to use for our sand therapy for right now. Um, I have my measuring cups again and this is actually flour. Remember the other day when I made stuff I dumped it into this bowl. So this is actually flour. So this is the recipe actually calls for eight cups of flour to one cup of baby oil. My favorite, that's another magic ingredient. Baby oil is like amazing. Now, obviously if it is baby oil in it, are we gonna eat it? No, if you wanted it to be edible, then you could just add um, corn oil or canola oil or one of the oils. I mean, I certainly it certainly wouldn't taste good, but it would be something that, you know, if you're worried about toxins, however, the reason that I always choose baby oil is because uh, it smells so good. Yes, it absolutely does smell good. 
So I would like you to help me now that we've worked on all those fractions. I would like you to help me cut the recipe in half. So eight cups, what is one half of eight? Anybody? Divide in half. Four, that's correct. So we are going to do four cups of flour in my pan right here. All right, this is regular old baking flour. And I'm gonna sprinkle it around because this is actually sand, not dough. So we do not need it to putty up. One of the cups are getting away. Again, you know how sloppy I am. It doesn't even matter to me. Four cups of flour. There we go. And so it would have been one cup of baby oil. So if it's not one cup, we're cutting it in half. Anybody? It's going to be one half, right? So instead of one cup, it is one half. That should be this one, I believe. Yes, it is. And I'm going to actually pour this over top of the, of the flour. It's very simple. It's a very simple recipe. It lasts for a really long time. We put this in our sensory box at school. It lasts for a very long time. We did it when we made snow, because it's cool, right? Feels like, it does feel soft, and it does mold. That is the good part about this stuff, is it does mold. I think I might need a little bit more flour. Um, so all I'm, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. All right, so all that you're gonna do is you're gonna mix the oil into the flour, and it is going to make like a sand-like substance. If you have too much oil, it'll turn like a little browner, but otherwise it'll stay nice and white. And flour is another thing that feels really good on your hands, so it, it's fun. It's a fun activity, it's a fun meditation that you can do. Okay, so just like our sand, um, our sand video, when she talked about how sand is soothing and it's for meditation, here's what you would do. You would close your eyes and you would run your hands down it. Feels good. The good part about this sand too is it does mold. So if you had like little molds, you can build things in it. Like you can make sand castles with this stuff because it does mold. Moon sand, I, that's what I call it. Moon sand is very, very therapeutic because it feels delightful it smells wonderful because of the baby oil. Now, if you don't like the smell of baby oil and you use regular cooking oil, then you could add any of the scented um, essential oils like we talked about before. So that's completely up to you. But sand therapy is very healthy because again, it lowers, when you make that motion, when you run your fingers through stuff, that's why gardening is very good for you. It's why the beach is very good for you to actually get in there and get your fingers and toes in the sand because it lowers your heart rate. Hmm. See, very little known facts about things that are very simple. It lowers your heart rate and that's what we're looking for, right? A little bit of peace. So it is, yes, it is the ocean sounds of the water, but it is also the sand that is very therapeutic for you. Okay, make some moon sand. Super fun. See, it falls up. That's why the kids thought it was like snowballs before. Molds up. So make some moon sand. Have some fun. Do something, play in the rice. Do something so that you are concentrating on only the good, peaceful parts of your brain. Um, actually, I put up an article too in the video, in the slideshow about why it works. So kinesthetic learning, using your senses for learning works because we're trying to wire our brains so that the neurons are connected. So you have all these neurons in your brain and when you connect different things, it's why like when something really emotional happens in your life and there's a song playing, you always remember it, right? Because the song actually triggers can trigger the memory. 
because when your senses are all involved, um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to wire your brain to think good things, right? So if you're thinking about very happy thoughts and you're running your hands through the sand and that's lowering your heart rate and calming you, that's what you will remember. If you listen to your favorite song while you're doing all of that, that would be even more relaxing because it will be using more of your senses. See? Interesting, right? So read the stuff that I that I put on the slideshow. Look, look for the recipes, they are in there. Um, have a little fun, do some meditation, breathe deep, be happy, okay?